Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of CPP4Beginners.com's continuing tutorial series. This is going to be episode 30A, and we're going to be talking a bit more, or 31A, I'm sorry. And we're going to be talking a bit more about vectors, and we're specifically going to be talking about iterators and vectors member functions. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably uh, sick and tired of doing the same things with containers. I, I know. There's only so many times I can dazzle you guys by filling and then printing out uh, an array or a vector and then reversing it. I promise you this is the last video where I'm going to be outputting a, a normal, boring array of ints. But in this case, showing you guys what iterators are is very important. So far, what we've done is we've gone and uh, taken a very C approach to learning C++. Meaning, I've used counter variables, I've used pointers, I've used a lot of different things that are all coming from the C language. But, when we get into different types of containers, not vectors specifically, but when we get in different types of containers, we're going to have a lot of um, sort of difficulty if we don't learn what an iterator is and how to utilize it properly. And the reason why is because sometimes using a subscript, you know how we've had that array one of i type of thing, and that'll return us a number? That doesn't work with every type of container. And there are times when a certain type of container will be far more useful than, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be like there are times when an array is not suitable where a vector is. In the same way, there are going to be times when a map or a queue or a DQ are going to be far more suitable than a vector. So without further ado, I want to give you guys sort of a primer into um, iterators. And I'm going to do that by showing you uh, iterators inside of the vector template. So we'll start by declaring a vector of ints. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed by now, I have a really hard time typing and talking at the same time. And we're going to call it vints, and we're going to propagate it using the same old for loop that we always do. I, I really do swear this is the last time I'm going to be using this boring for loop. And we're just going to do vints dot pushback of i. And so that's going to give us a, a normal simple array. Now we're going to use the um, vector template again, but this time we're going to use it to make uh, a vector int, but we're going to use a member function of it called iterator. And what iterator does is it sets us up sort of something that's like an internal counter. Um, we're going to just name it iter. That's going to be the name of our iterator here. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this iterator, named iter, to output the contents of vector. And now we know what should be in here by now. I mean, if you've been following along with these tutorials, you know that that contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, I think I've used that loop probably 10 times now. I know you're sick of it. Really, this is the last time I'm using it. Promise. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for int i equals 0. No, I'm playing around. Okay. We're going to take iter, and we're going to set it equal to v ints dot begin. Now... The difference between vints.begin and setting something equal to zero is what if later we have a container where before we get started uh, in, in our array, we might pop the first item out of it, or we might 
uh, be using a volatile data type that makes it so we have to check every time immediately before we use that container? Well, the answer is, you know, we're going to have to start at a memory location. We can't start at a number. We can't start at uh, a zero. And that's what begin is. Begin means that wherever the memory for vints begins, we're also going to begin our iterator there. That's where it's going to start. Now we're going to say iterator is less than v ints dot end and for as long as it's in between those two values we are going to use the normal iterator plus plus which is a lot like i plus plus now to see out this we're just going to use the dereference operator and have it reference iterator and then just toss in an endl. Now there's a lot of different ways where we can change different things around and uh, make this work differently. But I want you guys to know that this dereference operator is there for a reason. And we're going to be getting into why we're using a pointer to access uh, using an iterator later on. Um, just for now, trust me, if I had more than 15 minutes, I would get into it. Okay, so we're just going to print this out, and I think we should expect this, um, line separated, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there you have it. So I want to show you guys how easy it is to create a reversal using an iterator using the vector class. Not all uh, not all sorts of code is going to be this easy. Now, sorry, there was something stuck in my key there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take vector and we're going to change this iterator into a reverse iterator. And we're going to call it R iter to show that it's a reverse iterator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this whole thing right here. Um, I'm also going to add in a couple of endls before this just to show that we're sort of on a different part now. And I'm just going to paste that for loop from above. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type change every reference to iter to r iter and now we're going to see what happens just by um by changing that into a reverse iterator and oh there is one other thing that i have to change and you know how we have begin and end? Well, Vector has a, a wonderful way of handling this when you want things to print out in reverse. And it's called rbegin and rend, which means um, rbegin is simply reverse begin, which means the end of the array is set as the beginning and our end is set the beginning of the I should really call it vector here vector to the beginning or to the end I'm sorry Okay, so now we have these uh, these few things that we've changed. We've changed be begin to r begin, end to r end, and iter into r iter. So we've effectively changed three things, uh, and all of them are pretty much names of sorts. But with the power of member functions, we now 
print this out in reverse. Now, I don't expect that you're going to remember or be inherently comfortable with this your first time seeing it or looking at it. Um, this is going to take you some amount of time to get used to, and it looks like I have just enough time to talk about one other thing that uh, I, I rather enjoy doing here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reuse this loop. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the pre-existing loop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something that's called pop back. And I'll explain what that is. Okay. Pop back means that we are removing the last element from the vector. So whatever is in the final spot on the vector is being removed. Now let's, um, let's print this out and see what we get here. And the answer is, oh, it's the same. Now, let me show you what happens if we try to do a simple for loop, just to print out what's in the vector. We're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than v, well, that wasn't even a v, int dot size, I plus plus C out V ints of I. And we're going to add an end L here. And we'll just add two more end Ls here to show another separation. And we're going to add a C out here that says, huh, that's odd. and see out, and we'll just toss in an end up. I don't know, you know what, we're going to combine that and just toss some backslash ends in here. Okay, so what are we expecting to happen and what will happen? And of course it would crash right there. BRB, pausing. Okay, so continuing on, we're going to try compiling that again. And this time, you'll notice that after we popped everything off the back, when we go to do this for loop, we don't get anything in there. And so there's four blank lines because there was two before and then two after this for loop, but there's nothing there. And the reason why is because v ints is presently empty. So when you are done with elements in a vector, you can use pop back to just take them off. There is no pop front in vector, but there are different types of containers that do support pop front. All right, so what we've covered here, and it's been a lot, we've covered, once again, iterating through uh, an array. We've covered declaration of an array, declaration of an iterator, accessing an iterator, setting an iterator equal to member functions, using member functions to destroy um, parts of an array and free up memory. And then we've shown that these elements of an array are, or well, of a vector in this case, or of any type of data storage, can simply disappear from that type of container. So hopefully you guys have taken that away. Um, I don't think I'm going to give a, a specific homework. I want you guys to play around with iterators and reverse iterators and maybe try to um, shoot over to Yahoo Answers or something along those lines and help some people solve problems. Solve their you know homework for them. I do it all the time and it's probably not ethical but sometimes people need help. So Hopefully you guys have taken away a lot from this episode. I know it's taken me uh, a little while conceptualizing it to make it. So with all that being said, I'm Damien with CPP for Beginners, and thank you for watching this almost exactly 15 minute long video. Have a good one.